It is 648. This is your morning in eight minutes. Right now, the Knox County Sheriff's Office needs your help identifying a man found dead on Fort Loudon Lake. Deputies say the man was found floating in the water near a private boat dock in the 7800 block of Carroll Lane last Wednesday morning, just after nine o'clock. He's a white man, possibly middle aged or older, and has no identifying marks. Officials say he was wearing shorts and a T-shirt and had a gaming device in his pocket. If you know anything, call KSO's Major Crimes Unit. That number is at the bottom of your screen and inside your WVLT News app. Any tips can remain anonymous. Right now, prosecutors are seeking the death penalty against a mother in the murder of her one-year-old daughter. Erica Lawson was arraigned on first-degree murder and other charges in Bell County, Kentucky yesterday. In July, her daughter Elena was taken to a hospital in Middlesbrough after being seriously hurt from what investigators say was severe abuse. The toddler was flown to East Tennessee Children's Hospital in Knoxville. Staff tried to save her, but she didn't make it. Right now, Lawson is charged with first degree murder and being held on a million dollar bond. No additional arrests have been made. Officials still waiting for DNA test results from others that could be involved. A vehicular homicide case that led to the death of a 24 year old man is headed to a grand jury. Police say Shannon Walker drove across several lanes of traffic on Kingston Pike while he was under the influence, hitting and killing Ben Kredich, who was walking on the sidewalk. Walker appeared in Knox Court yesterday for a preliminary hearing. He is facing seven charges, including vehicular homicide, DUI, and drug possession. We'll keep you updated as we learn more. A woman from Mascots facing several charges after police say she assaulted and broke into an elderly woman's home. This happened in Knoxville. The 91 year old says she didn't know the woman. The victim says this woman, Jennifer Hickey, came to her front porch, threw a soda can at her head and pushed her down before walking inside of her home. The 91 year old was able to flag down someone who was driving nearby. Police say they found Hickey inside the home. She told them that it was now her house and she belonged there. She also told officers she took methadone earlier that day. Hickey is charged with elder abuse and aggravated burglary. Former Tennessee Governor Don Sundquist will be laid to rest in a private ceremony in Townsend today. And that's where he lived after his political career. Sundquist lied in state yesterday at the state capitol in Nashville. The color guard escorted his casket to the first floor rotunda. A celebration of life also held at First Evangelical Lutheran Church. Sundquist represented the state in Congress for 12 years, then served as Tennessee's governor from 1995 to 2003. The burial service is for family members only. Sundquist was 87 years old. Federal regulators say nearly 52 million airbag systems from ARC Automotive and Delphi should be recalled. ARC is located in Knoxville just off of Middlebrook Pike. And according to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, at least two people have been killed, seven hurt due to the air airbags. The NHTSA investigators also say the airbag inflators are defective because of improper welding. In May, ARC said that no defect exists in the inflators and that any problems were related to isolating manufacturing issues. Officials say the airbag systems are installed in cars from 2000 to 2018 models from at least a dozen manufacturers. United Airlines says it has resumed flights after briefly delaying all U.S. and Canada flights yesterday due to a system-wide technology issue. According to FlightAware, a handful of United flights were canceled and hundreds were delayed. The FAA issued an alert saying it was an equipment outage. The ground stop was lifted about a little over an hour later. A United spokesperson says a software update was to blame. In a move that could drive up gas prices, Saudi Arabia and Russia have agreed to extend production cuts through the end of the year. Analysts say stocks fell after the announcement, meaning prices will likely rise. With the extension of their voluntary oil production cuts, 1.3 barrels of crude oil will be trimmed from the global market. AAA says the national average price of a gallon of gas was $3.81 yesterday. That is down one cent from last week, but up roughly three cents compared to a year ago. And here's a look at the prices you're going to be paying at the pump today. In Knoxville, the average price per gallon sits at $3.32. The state average, $3.40. And the national average is $3.80. Tennessee is the fourth cheapest market in the country behind Mississippi and Louisiana and Texas. Meanwhile, some good news is economic analysis analysts feel optimistic about the U.S. economy over the next year. A report from Goldman Sachs says a U.S. recession is 15% less likely to happen. It's being called a soft landing, which means bringing down inflation without an economic collapse. 
It adds that U.S. paychecks will keep rising higher than goods and that American spending will keep the country's economic engine running. And the former head of the Proud Boys, Enrique Terrio, sent to, set to spend 22 years in prison for his role in leading the January 6th 2021 attack on the U.S. Capitol. It's the longest sentence handed out in the Justice Department's investigation into the Capitol breach. He pleaded for mercy from the judge who gave him a shorter sentence than the 33 years behind bars that prosecutors recommended. Well, do you know anyone who's looking for a job? The Publix is hiring workers for a new store. The Foothills Mall location is opening soon. A hiring fair is happening this Friday and Saturday from 10 to 4 at Life Event Center on Tuckalichi Pike in Maryville. You can also find a link to apply online in the As Seen On section of your WVLT News app. Heads up for parents of young children, a child safety seat clinic is headed to Blunt County. Three out of 10 car seats are found to be unsafe due to age or damage, so experts will be there to make sure your seat is safe. Trained and certified child passenger safety seat technicians will be in Rockford on Saturday to make sure your child's car seat is installed correctly inside your car. This is happening again it's Saturday at the Rockford Elementary School from 9 in the morning until noon. Taking a look at your first alert traffic now at 654. This is Alcoa Highway right around that exit from McGee Tyson Airport where it is a very, very foggy start to this Wednesday morning commute. You can barely make out the highway there, so just use caution. If you are going to the airport, the good news is all flights are on time coming and going with the exception for one delayed. No cancellations, So As you're moving around downtown Knoxville, still dealing with that low visibility. This is I-40 right around Hall of Fame Drive. The good news is you're not dealing with any of that morning rush congestion just yet. So the fog may slow you down, but not the vehicles on the road. So right now, 75, I-40, 640, all running on time. We're not tracking any reason for an alternate route. Just be mindful of those crews closing the shoulder of Alcoa Highway between Woodson Drive today and Cherokee Trail. Your first alert forecast with meteorologist Paige Noel. Well, Whitney definitely showed you some of those foggy views, and you can definitely see it here on our maps as well. Not only Knoxville, but into parts of that Southern Valley. Less than a mile of visibility from Knoxville to Blunt, down towards that Southern Valley, up along 75 at Anderson to Campbell, towards parts of Scott County. Not looking too bad for our far northeastern counties, parts of Sevier County, dealing with that thicker fog as well. So look at those temperatures right now. 66 Sevierville to 70 in Knoxville, 66 Oak Ridge or 64 La Follette, 66 in Harriman and into Madisonville. The good news is we are tracking a cold front today. Whether you look at that as good news is not. It does bring us some of that lower humidity, but not until we get till tomorrow. So we're still pretty humid to start out on Thursday and then we are slow to see that lower humidity move in. Look at all those smiley faces by the time we get into your Thursday, really afternoon to evening. That's going to make for some more comfortable mornings by the end of the week. You can see those lows dropping into about the lower 60s. Got lots of sunshine as we head into the weekend. We are tracking just some stray showers both Saturday and Sunday or in back up next week, but another cold front on the way Wednesday. Honestly, by the end of next week into next weekend could feel and look a whole lot more like fall. Maybe some highs in the 70s. We'll keep our fingers crossed for that one. My goodness, a light jacket maybe? Maybe, maybe, maybe a sweater. That. Wow, I need to go shopping. It's been 120 <laughs> over the last couple of weeks. All right, 656. Still got two more hours of East Tennessee news, weather, and traffic. We'll see it on WBXX.